Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to yet another Thomas and Friends unboxing. Today we're going to be looking at Spencer by Backman who is a lovely A4 in this sort of silvery livery and interestingly I actually have two of these because I'm going to be giving one of them away as part of this year's giveaway. Only part of this year's giveaway, there's going to be some other bits as well uh, but if you want to win your very own Spencer by Backman uh, keep your eye on the channel and uh, there will be uh, a video opening the competition very soon. But today we're going to be looking at mine and uh, yep as you can see he's, uh, he's very nice looking and we're going to get him open right now so let's take a look at uh, the Backman Spencer. And as you can see, this packaging is the slightly more old-fashioned one. I noticed with uh, Rosie they had uh, all new packaging. But no, this one's a little bit older, so uh, it's got that. And I'm not going to show you the packaging because you've seen it all a hundred times already. So uh, let's get Spencer out straight away. And as you know, I like to cut with a knife, very carefully by the way. And don't do this if you haven't got an adult with you. In fact, let the adult do it, that'll be better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just cut into the back of the packaging so that you can slip the loco out and then you can reuse the packaging if you need to. And of course I do need to for unboxings and such so let's get Spencer out then if I can it's a bit of an awkward fit this one but I got him here he is all right so there he is then in his little sleeve we're gonna look at him in just a second I'm gonna grab the instructions first because I know some people like to see those okay the only part that is really interesting is the uh, the manual which has the exploded diagram on it so let's have a look at that Yep, there it is, as you can see, all of Spencer's different parts there, the gears and the eye mechanism and the face, which again looks a little bit blank and scary on there. But uh, yep, very useful, and it's all got the part numbers on it, of course, if you ever needed to uh, find spare parts for him, so that's fantastic. But again, not what we're here for, so let's get Spencer out. Let's start with his tender. Which is quite unusual looking I think but uh, yeah as you can see it's got metal wheels and uh, it looks uh, to be a fairly decent tender to be honest um, it looks the part doesn't it really really nice and of course I'm going to show you this in more detail later on okay let's get Spencer then who of course as I said earlier is based on an A4 quite interesting looking though um, there's a few reasons why it doesn't look just like an A4 but we'll get to that in a little while but as you can see he is lovely looking he's got all the, the linkage rods and the valve gear and stuff which does look great down there and if I hold the tender with him you can see them both together there we go, Spencer, look at that, awesome. Okay, well here's a little bit of info on Spencer, as well as a couple of shout outs, and once I've done that I will show you him up close, and then later on we'll get him running, which is definitely my favourite part. Okay, let's get to it. So the shout outs, first of all then, hello to Crypel YouTube Gaming, Ben's Couch and Oliver's Trains. Thank you so much for getting in touch, and I hope you enjoy seeing Spencer today. So Spencer was built during the late 1930s, and of course was based on the Class A4 from the LNER. He has a very famous family, with Mallard as a brother, and the Flying Scotsman as a cousin. Spencer had a bit of a dodgy start on Sodor though. On his first trip he ran out of water because he ignored Gordon's advice, and next he badly lost a race to Edward, which put him uh, in quite a bad mood as I understand it. Because of his splendid looks, Spencer is also a little bit arrogant, and completely refuses to take part in shunting of any kind. He's even much more pompous than Gordon, but I think if it came to it he would be able to work hard, wouldn't he? Okay, let's have a close look at him. So there he is then, Spencer, and doesn't he look fab up close there on the white background? So the first thing I'm going to talk about is, I'm going to just say a few words about the build quality. Now, as you know, the build quality on my Backman Thomas Locos has always been absolutely fine. I've always found them very sturdy and very, very good. Uh, and this one is still quite sturdy, but I did have a couple of issues with it straight out of the box. The first thing was the buffer beam, um, and as you can see, there's nothing wrong with that now because I fixed it. But when I first got him out, the buffers were facing downward because the buffer beam had actually broken off and it was just loose and I had to glue that back into place. Now I know that is a definite quality issue because the one I bought for the giveaway is exactly the same. If I show you a shot of it you can see it looks like the buffers are pointing downwards and that's because they're broken off. Now I can't do anything about that one because it's not mine to open. One of you lucky people are going to win it. Uh, so I'm going to have to tell the person who wins it how to fix that as well if they want to. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a shame about that. Uh, you don't really want to be fixing toys straight out of the box. And also the face on mine, although it is a beautifully moulded face and it looks just like the character on TV, I would say it's got a few marks on it, which is a bit of a shame. It looks like he's been through a war zone or something. So yes, maybe that isn't too great. 
Okay, well, let's have a look at the various details then. Um, as you can see, I, I really love the colour on this. It's sort of like a bluey colour. It's not silver like Silver Link, which is very nice. And I also love the gloss. Look how shiny it is. But unfortunately, there isn't any lining on the boiler, which uh, is a little bit of a shame because I do like to see lining. But of course, he has got the handrail, which has been painted into a slightly different colour, uh, which I suppose is nice to see. He's also got his Spencer nameplate, which I must admit, once again, is very nicely applied. Uh, but apart from that, the detailing in terms of paintwork is very basic. Of course, you've got uh, the area around his face, or where the smoke box would be, behind the casing. Uh, that's been picked out in the black. And also, the area around the cab has also been picked out in uh, more of a matte black, which I think is very nice to see. There's one or two separately fitted parts too. Of course, you've got the whistle just in front of his chimney there, which is separately fitted and separately painted. And you also have lamp irons, which is a very nice thing to see, actually. I don't really recall. I think some of them, some of the others have them, but uh, they are nice because they're painted white, of course. Again, he's got quite nice looking buffers, as all of the range do. These are painted silver. And there's also a coupling hook on there, as is the norm with the Thomas Locos. Now, the thing that is a little bit weird about this one is that it doesn't really look like an A4. The front is definitely not right and I've seen a lot of other YouTubers uh, that have picked up on this as well and I think the reason really is because he's got moving eyes the face really has to be completely vertical for that mechanism to work and of course if the face was slanting backwards like it's really supposed to those eyes wouldn't work so I think in that sense the Hornby Spencer is better because it really does have the slanting face but I see why they've done it and I don't think it spoils the model too much although of course it means that it's not quite as authentic as it would be in the show the other thing I really like about this is, uh, just like Rosie, he has got a real cab area. There isn't any detailing inside, but at least it's not just a block. It is a real cab area, which is very nice. And of course, as I've already talked about, you've got the, the whole uh, linkage down there, which is quite chunky, but that means it's uh, quite robust. And also the wheels are painted into that lovely sort of baby blue colour, which I think looks brilliant. Okay, let's look at the tender, and the tender really is basic. There's uh, basically almost no detail on the tender. Um, so you have got this black lining on it, which is nice and at the handrail which is picked out in the silver just like on the loco but apart from that you've only really got the coal um, which of course is nice and glossy like the Backman coal tends to be and round the back you've got very basic detailing there too you've got uh, what looks just a bit like one of those corridor connectors and of course the same buffers on the back so very basic detail a few small quality issues, uh, none that can't be rectified, but I suppose it's a bit more difficult to rectify the face. You'd have to paint that, I suppose. But uh, generally, you know, a fairly basic model, nothing wrong with it per se, and it does look roughly like the character from the show. Of course, let down very slightly by the front end, which doesn't really look like an A4. But apart from that, not a bad effort from Backman. Okay, let's get him down onto the track then with some coaches that he'll enjoy to pull, because he doesn't like shunting wagons and things, does he? So uh, let's do that and see how he gets on, shall we? So there's the lovely Batman Spencer down onto the track, I think for his first ever test on camera. Because he likes to feel important, I've given him some very posh coaches, some Queen of Scott coaches. There's only three of them, and I think he could perhaps manage one or two more maybe, but I think he'll be very comfortable pulling those. Okay, so yes, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the very first time I've ever run uh, Spencer on the channel. I have had him testing before, but he's not done an awful lot of running, except I have had him running in a little bit just now. So let's do a little bit of slow speed performance with him then let's see how he goes just turning the juice up and as you can see he's started doing a very nice slow crawl now I must say he's not that heavy so he's not going to have a massive amount of pulling power but it's certainly not bad at all and look at that what a beautiful smooth takeoff that was trying backwards he's a touch on the noisy side going backwards I would say but I'll just need to run him in a bit more I suppose and then that will improve but generally, he's a very, very good smooth runner, I think. Let me get a shot of those eyes then, if I can. There we go, you can just about see those moving there. And for now then, let's couple him to his coaches and see how he gets on there, shall we? Nice and steadily does it for the coupling. There we go, and I'll keep pushing him back so that he's in shot. There we go. So I'm going to get him started with those coaches then in just a sec. Hopefully he'll be able to pull them. Elsewhere on the layout, I've put out lots of other Pacifics. And for those youngsters out there, all Pacific mean is that uh, the Loco has four wheels at the front, six driving wheels, and two little wheels at the back. So when you see the other engines on the rest of the layout, uh, see if you can spot which is the odd one out, which is not a Pacific. For now then, let's get Spencer to move with his coaches. Here we go. I can't remember whether I've changed direction. Yes, I did. 
And let's see those Queen of Scott coaches. Very posh coaches. Because Spencer's quite a posh engine, isn't he, really? There we go. Okay, let me show you what else is going to be running with him. On the middle line, then, we have another Pacific from the LNER. And this, of course, is Gordon, who's pulling some very nice express coaches. And he looks happy about that, if you ask me. So, yep, that's Gordon. And on the inner line, then, we have Spencer's real-life counterpart, which is, of course, one of the real A4s. And this one is Silver Link, also got some Pullman coaches. So, hope you enjoy seeing these run. And, as always, keep your eyes out for those other Pacifics. And there's the first one there, and the second one just in the corner. OK, enjoy the running session. There goes Gordon under the passenger bridge and uh, here comes Spencer now, he's about to go up uh, Gordon's Hill. Now my particular Spencer is uh, quite a slow runner even at full speed, he doesn't go that fast. But somebody showed me a video of one of these running on somebody else's channel and he absolutely flew around, he was super quick. But mine isn't, mine is quite a slow runner, which I like but uh, maybe there's a bit of variation in the speeds. Hmm, that's odd. He is a nice steady runner though, isn't he? Which is what we like. Very, very good. Well, my backman uh, Silver Link is going a little bit faster than Spencer because a minute ago they were running almost together but uh, yeah, sadly, poor Spencer's lagged behind a little bit. But that's okay, Spencer, you go at your own speed. Don't let anybody tell you off for that. But yeah, he does look the part, doesn't he? I do love all that linkage on his wheels and all the valve gear. I think that looks great going round. So yes, definitely a very smart and very splendid looking loco. Just like Gordon who of course will always be very splendid looking with his very nice blue paint job and I always find he looks lovely with these XLNER coaches oh yes, look at that Let's talk about my ratings then for the Backman Spencer. Detail, 4 out of 10. Yes, of course, not a massive amount of detail. But as always with the Backman Thomas Locos, that one is in red because I don't count it in the final score. Because, of course, they're not really designed to be detailed. Performance, 9 out of 10. I can't really fault mine for performance. It's not too heavy, which means it can't pull a terrible amount. But he is nice and smooth and also good and quiet, which is exactly what you want. Character 8 out of 10, let down very slightly by the shape, obviously it isn't the proper shape of an A4 and so it's not the proper shape of Spencer, but we can see why they had to do that, so it's not all that bad overall. Build quality 7 out of 10, let down a little bit by the build quality because I did have to make some minor repairs and you know there's a few scuffs on him straight out of the packaging, but again not too bad. Value, I paid £85 for mine, which I don't think is terrible, so I've given it 7 out of 10. So overall that is 7.75 out of 10 and let's put him into the rankings. That places him 52nd just below the Hornby Railroad Midland Compound and above the Hornby Pacer. Hmm, quite like this angle, not done this for a long while. Let's see if Spencer's going to turn up. Oh yes, there he is. <laughs> oh, he's happy though, isn't he? That's the main thing. I'm sorry you've got marks on your face, Spencer. Wasn't me though.
Okay then everybody, well that's just about it for my review of Spencer. I hope you enjoyed seeing him today. He is a lovely model and uh, I hope you uh, win him in my giveaway later. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I'll be making a video about that very shortly. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook or Twitter. And if you've got any loco trouble, don't hesitate to get in touch with me because I do have a locomotive repair service now. So uh, feel free to look me up on eBay or send me an email to samstrains at outlook.com if you'd like that. But for now, thank you once again for watching and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.